Hi, I'm Tiffany Hayes of Needle and Haystack Designs, and I want to talk to you about the Goddess Tool. It's a new tool that I have designed that is useful in my Asteria Block of the Month program. The tool is provided in Block 2 of the Asteria program. You don't use it before Block 2, so we inserted it at Block 2. This is a quick look of what the tool is like. I have it on an 8.5 by 14 piece of paper in your pattern, like I said, block 2. Now to use this tool, first off, I suggest that you get a piece of template plastic and that you trace it precisely onto the template plastic. Cut it out exactly, mark all the marks. Now if you're using this template plastic tool and you happen to cut through it, shave off the edges a little bit, you will want to make a new one. This is the one I made just as a sample so that you could see what I had done. But like I said, if you start using it and you start getting too close and you start shaving it off, you'll change the shape of the tool. And what will happen is you will then change the shape of your pieces. And you don't want to do that. So I suggest that you get the acrylic tool that I have because then it won't, you won't change shapes. But if you're going to use template plastic and you have a, a little issue with it, you're going to want to draw a brand new one. Alright, so let's talk about a couple things. First off, we're going to talk about the cutting. Cutting needs to be precise. This, this pattern is not hard. We'll take it one block at a time, but there are a lot of points. And to get your points perfect, I have some, some hints for you. But right away, you need good technique. You need to cut precisely the pieces exactly the sizes that they need to be. You need to make sure that your quarter inch on your sewing machine is exactly a quarter inch. Not scant, not bigger. You need to do a test and make sure that your quarter inch is exactly a quarter inch. The problem is, is that there are so many pieces, different number of pieces in each of the blocks in my block of the month, that you can't assume that if you're off just by a hair, it's going to be consistent throughout. Because say you take a block that has eight pieces next to a block that has 24 pieces, that seam allowance is going to suck up differently and it's going to change the, the finished sizes of those blocks and they won't go together well. The next thing you need to do is press very well. I have decided on this, pro, this block that, or this uh, quilt that I will press every seam open. My blocks rotate and they line up differently next to each other and you can never predict which is going to be if, if you're pressing to the dark side, if they will all line up, that doesn't work in this quilt. So what you need to do is press seams open. I know this seems very unconventional, but believe me, it works. Dark is always to the dark. Light is always to the light. And there are other benefits as well. You can always see the points that you need to sew through from the back side. Uh, pinning. I love to pin. I didn't used to, but what a difference it makes in the finished product. I suggest that you pin. So with all that out of the way, now let's talk about the tool itself and some cutting. Okay, how to make a half square triangle using the goddess tool. Now I know I'm not the best at this filming thing yet, but I'm working on it. Here's a four and a half inch strip. I have my goddess tool and I want to tell you that this is a prototype. Yours will be a little bit clearer and much better, um, but I had to film with something, so here we go. When you are going to cut these strips or cut the half square triangles, I start with a four and a half inch strip. On the tool, there is a spot for a two and a half inch strip triangle. Uh, sorry, a half square triangle, two and a half inch strip, half square triangle, three inch strip, half square triangle, three and a half inch strip. Uh, same thing at a four and a half and a five inch strip. I'm going to use a four and a half inch strip. That is what is used mostly in the quilt itself. First thing I want to do is square up the end of my four and a half inch strip. And if you take two rulers, sorry, put them side by side, you can do just that. Square up the end, move that away. And now, with the tool, you, there is a line for a four and a half inch strip. You line that up along the bottom edge of the fabric. You line the tool up along the left edge. You cut the first, make the first cut. Slide that away a little bit. Flip this over. Line up that four and a half inch line again along with the edge of the, of the tool and cut away. Now I always turn my cutoff corner to my bottom right. I'm right-handed. You would just reverse everything if you're left-handed. And I stack these up. 
put my tool on top, line it up at my four and a half inch line, and chop off the other corner. There we go. I'm going to do the same with this blue, and then I'm going to show you how to sew them together. Okay, so I have my two half square triangles from the four and a half inch strip the light blue and the dark blue, and I'm going to put them right sides together. Great thing with this project is that it is on batik, with, made with batik fabrics, and it's very hard to see the right side from the wrong side on a batik, so it's good to use either side, which is fabulous. I'm going to put this in my sewing machine, line it up on my quarter inch, and sew exactly one quarter inch on my piece. Okay, time to press. I have my two pieces sewn together and I mentioned earlier in the video that I am going to press every seam open. So, that is what I'm doing. Pressing them open and giving them a quick shot with some best press. Makes your pieces beautifully flat. And there we are, a perfect half square triangle, four and a half inch square. Seam pressed open, dark's always to the dark, light is always to the light. Okay, now I want to talk about the tall triangle. The tall triangle end of the tool is only set up for a four and a half inch strip. So I have my four and a half inch strip cut. I'm going to place my ruler on the dark blue fabric. I'm going to give it a cut on each side, pull this aside, and voila, I have the tall triangle. Okay, so on this piece, to make the tall tri half tall triangles, I'm going to take my four and a half inch piece, and I am going to cut it to a three inch rectangle. So that's four and a half inch by three inch. I'm going to scoot this aside, and on the tool there are lines, dotted lines, for half tall triangles. Now, all I have to do with this one is slice up this way. Now I'm going to line these up here. Now we're using batik, so it does not matter on my pattern here which way these are going because batiks are good on both sides. But if you're using a directional fabric, you will want to make sure that you have a right side up and a right side down sandwiched together so that when you do this you end up with tall triangle half tall triangles that will be directional the way you need them so here's one tall triangle and two half tall triangles there we go and now i will show you how to sew them together all right here is my tall triangle my two half tall triangles i'm going to start with just one and I've done the little clipping on the edge that the ruler shows, sorry, the tool shows to do. And I can place that right onto my tall triangle and give it a stitch on the quarter inch. And now we will press it open. Alrighty, just going to open this up. Touch it with my iron here, give it a flip, hit it from the front side, and we'll go sew the second piece on. Alright, we're ready for our second piece. I'm going to turn it over so I can see it better. Um, this little triangle at the top will line up perfectly. This down here will line up perfectly. When you sew with your very accurate quarter inch, will come right through those points just perfect. Okay, here we are ready to press this one open. Just have to get your fingernail in between there a little bit. Give it a press. Flip it over. A little spray starch. And now you have a four and a half inch square with a tall triangle unit. Perfectly. See this point up here? Quarter inch down from the top when you press open, you can see right where that point is so that you can pin it later and have perfect points. Okay, 
Now we're going to use the corner cutaway. I want to show you how that part works. We are going to use a four and a half inch square and a three inch half square triangle. So let's prepare that half square triangle. I'm going to line this up on the three inch line, trim that away, move away my excess, always flip so that my cutoff point is at my bottom right, line up my ruler, and trim away the other pointed corner so I have one half square triangle from a three inch strip. Now for my four and a half inch square, I want to use my medium corner cutaway, which is in the center part of the tool. Just line it up here. I'm going to trim along this way. That's going to remove that. I'm now going to perfectly line up my three inch half square triangle over my four and a half inch square with a medium cutaway. And off we go to the sewing machine. So here we are at the sewing machine. We'll line this up perfectly. Use our quarter inch seam. Stitch right along there. And when we press this open, we will have our four and a half inch square with a corner replaced with the dark fabric. So let's open this up. Let's get into this seam. This is not always the easy part. Sometimes a finger press helps. I'm going to get that pressed open. And voila, we have a four and a half inch square with that corner cutout sewn in. We'll use that later on in, in the Asteria quilt. I thank you for joining me and I hope that this helps you to use your Asteria tool, either the template plastic cutout or the actual acrylic tool that you can order from me at needleinahaystack.biz. Thanks so much. See you next time.